Hello there and happy holidays cake friends. Today I'm going to show you how to make this wreath cake using holly. You can grab all of the tools and equipment that you'll need to make this entire cake in the description box below this video. Subscribe while you're down there, like this video as well, and let's make this holiday cake. So I've got my red gum paste here, and this was just colored with red extra from Sugar Flare, but you can use any red coloring that's very intense and like a nice deep red color. In order to make our berries, I've just got some 28 gauge wires that I've hooked at the end, and this is exactly the same way we did with the mistletoe, so check that video out. And these have been cut into eight. So just grab a small amount of your red gum paste. Make sure that you've given it a good knead through first. Roll it into a nice smooth ball on the palm of your hand. Then we'll take our wire, dip the very end in just a little bit of water, the hooked end, wipe off the excess, and then just poke that straight through the middle. And then thread it all the way up until you can just see the point of it like that. And then you just wanna smooth it around the base a little bit. So I'm just giving it like a very tiny pinch at the very base of it. So it stays put and doesn't slide down the wire. And just make sure you can still see the tip and then allow that to dry overnight. So do a variety of sizes, some a little bigger, some a little smaller. So just rolling that into a smooth ball, putting a tiny bit of water on the wire and then poking that right through the center and threading that all the way up and then securing it onto the wire by pinching at the base. So again, allow those to dry overnight completely so that they're not moving off of the wire at all. And now we can get started on the leaves. So for the leaves, I've used holly green shocking i know and <laughs> i've also used a little bit of spruce green and a touch of gooseberry but mostly holly green just use any kind of vibrant and deep green that you have so this is what it looks like it's a really nice dark green color very saturated which you can do um, using my gum paste recipe. Of course, I will link that in the description box below, but with my recipe, you add the color as a part of the recipe as opposed to adding it afterwards, which allows you to get a very deep color without compromising the structure of the gum paste. So give that a quick knead. And this one is a little bit sticky right now. So we're definitely going to be putting a bit of cornstarch before we roll it through the pasta machine. Just a little bit, so it's not gonna be sticking to the rollers. And then let's put it through the pasta machine to a number two. Give it a quick smooth. And then I've got a couple different cutters. It doesn't really matter which cutter you use. I'm just using an elongated teardrop shape and I'll just cut out a couple of those just both of the shapes so you can see it doesn't matter which one you use. Anything in this general shape is perfect because we're going to continue to cut onto the sides of it. So place those under your double piece of plastic wrap so that they don't dry out. Now for this, I'm using 26 gauge wires. So I've grabbed one of my slimmer leaves and I've got a piping tip. And this is a Nateco 805 tip, so anything around that size. Now I'm just gonna cut out little teeth marks, like a little caterpillar was eating this leaf. The only thing you wanna keep in mind as you do this is to keep the leaf kind of shaped like a leaf. You don't want it to start looking wonky. So it is gonna taper at the top and the bottom. That's great. And we don't want them to be all even because on a holly leaf, all of the little teeth marks are not even. So dip your 26 gauge wire into some water and then thread that through with your finger on both sides of it. And secure that to the wire. Next, we will thin out those edges a little bit. So I'm gonna elongate 
and then just thin out the edges. Again, keeping in mind to keep the same kind of leaf shape. Now, I've got a veiner here. This is just a really cheap veiner. I'll link it in the description box below, but any type of leafy kind of veiner with these prominent side veins would work perfectly. So it has like the central vein and then the side ones. So I'll just give this a very quick vein, making sure that the central vein is going right down the middle. Give it a nice press and then peel it off. Now what I wanna do is flip this over and on all of the little pointy parts, I'm going to just give those a slight elongation and try and keep it in like the same direction as the veins would be on the other side. It's just to give it a little extra texture so it doesn't look so flat. So flip it back over and then down the central vein, I'm going to run my Dresden tool, this is the larger end, all the way down to reinforce that. Now we just need a little shaping. So I will fold that right in half. And then holding that fold there, I wanna just open up the leaf slightly on the edges. So it still keeps that nice central vein, but it is opening up. And the final step is going to be just to accentuate all of those little pointy parts. So I'm giving them a tiny pinch. Perfect. So we will dry that overnight in this bumpy foam. Just try and keep it kind of an organic shape. We don't want it to look too flat in there. Give it some nice movement if you can, and then just allow that to dry. I'll show you one quickly with the larger kind of cutter, the teardrop cutter. So again, just take your piping tip and do some little bite marks or whatever you want to call them. And there are different kind of shapes of holly. So take a look online to see the different kinds that there are. But there's some that are a little fatter, some that are a little bit longer. Dip the end of your wire into some water and then thread that through the base and close that. Next, we elongate a little bit and thin out the edges. Grab the veiner, make sure it's aligned at the tip and down the center. Give it a nice press and you can peel it off, flip it over. So we're just elongating all of those little points Give it some extra texture, flip it back over. Now we go right down the center with the Dresden tool. Then fold it in half and open up the sides. Now just fold the leaf and then you can just have a little fun pinching all of those little pointy bits of the holly. Just get your foam and allow that to dry again overnight. Make sure to leave it with lots of movement and texture so it doesn't look flat. Next step is going to be dusting our holly. So I've got a few here that are already finished so I can show you what they look like. So I've dusted these and I've also glazed them. So I'll take you through that whole process. So the leaves are totally dry now and so are all of our berries. And I've got just some really basic colors here. So I'm using Turkish black, leaf green, regatta bay blue, and then I've got just a basic yellow and red and a crimson as well. So these ones are just to kind of boost the color of the berries a little bit. And then all of these four colors are going to be for the leaves. All right, so let's mix the color for the leaves. I did do a few already. So it's just a mix of that leaf green and then I have a little cornstarch here, so I'm just pulling that in so it's not too splotchy. I added a touch of blue, just a very tiny amount, to kind of cool down the green a little bit. And then a little bit of black on the side, which we're going to use as a shadow color. So I'll mix the black in with a little bit of the green that's already been mixed with the cornstarch. So take the green and start dusting it upwards, just down the center line. Then we can start diffusing it outwards a little bit. So we want it darkest in the center and then it kind of gets lighter as we go out. Let's do the same on the back. 
Then I'm going to take the black mixed with the green. So it's like a very, very dark green color, a shade of green. And I will dust that down the center as well. And this is just gonna add some more shadow to our leaf. And again, I'm just diffusing that outwards as well. And the final step is going to be to take a little bit of that yellow color. And I have it mixed with just a little bit of green over here. So it's like a very light chartreuse kind of green. And I'm gonna dust a little bit of that onto the tips of the holly. There's a lot of varieties of holly, so this is just one. There's some with um, like the veins that are actually yellow looking, some that just have a little bit on the edge, some that don't have much yellow at all. So just take a look at some photos and see which one you wanna make. This one is pretty easy to make. And then if there's a little bit too much yellow, you can just go back in with the green and kind of buff it out a little bit. So you can see before and after. And then it's a huge difference also um, once we glaze it, it really boosts that color and sets it as well. So we're just gonna do a quick bit of dusting with the red for the berries. And this will just help boost the color a little bit, especially once we spray them. So I have just the regular red first, and I'll just dust that right onto the tops of the berries. And then I'm gonna take the crimson color and dust that a little bit more on the sides, but not being too specific about it, just putting a little extra shadow in there. And that's it, now we're ready to glaze. Now we're going to glaze all of our leaves and berries because holly is very shiny. So I just have this PME clear glaze spray that we're going to use. And you can also use plain confectioner's glaze as well, but I do like the spray so that it doesn't smudge around all of the dust on our leaves and berries. I'm spraying these on a styrofoam, which is kind of like an old piece of styrofoam. And then I have a recycling bag as well, uh, just to catch all of the extra spray. This stuff is very hard to get off, so I would recommend covering your surface well, or doing this inside a box is even better. So I'm just going to shake this and then kind of spray from afar. And we're going to be doing three coats of spray on the front of the leaves and then one coat of spray on the back. So once it's nice and shiny everywhere, just allow that to dry for a few minutes. Um, it dries pretty quickly and then we can put the next layers on. Tell me in the comments below if you have a favorite holiday treat to eat during the holiday season. I love my gingerbread recipe. I'm gonna link that for you guys in uh, the top right corner of this video. And I also absolutely love eggnog. I usually get the coconut version. It's delicious, but tell me what yours is. All of the holly and the berries have dried, so we are ready to tape them up. I have some dark green tape here, which just matches the holly nicely. And these only were drying for maybe 15 minutes, so it doesn't take long. I'm going to use half width tape, so I'll just run it through this tape cutter. Okay, so we'll just do um, some bunches of like threes and fives maybe, and then just a small bunch of the holly berries to go with it. I'm not gonna be too fussy about it. Actually, what I wanna do is make enough bunches so that we can make kind of a little wreath around the top of this cake. So let's start maybe with the threes. I don't think I need to tape down the stems because they're just gonna be close together like this. So I'll just take three leaves. Just make sure they look nice together before I start taping them up. And then I think I'm going to start taping these and then add the berries in after. So start with one stem. I would tape around a couple times just to make sure it's secured. Let's add a couple berries. Wrap around once and then you can begin adding more berries and then the leaves as well.
Once everything is secured at the top, we can tape all the way down the stem. And there's one little bunch done. So I'm going to kind of think about how I want to bunch them together in terms of how I want them to be added on to the cake. So maybe we'll do a few bunches of the threes and then I'll do bunches of two leaves so I can nudge them between um, and kind of fill up the little gaps. I'll show you one with the two leaves and then I'll do them all and then we can arrange them. Again, I'll start just with one stem and secure the tape on there and push it up. Now let's add a few berries. And just one more leaf like that. So I'll finish all of these up and then we can get to arranging our wreath. We're going to arrange the holly on this little cake. So it's just a five inch cake that I've covered in fondant. Um, it did get quite hard, so I poked a few holes where we're going to insert the holly. And I've also just put some thin wires around here. And these have been covered in just a brown floral tape. And I just bent them around and then pinned them to the cake to make kind of a wreath shape that looks a bit twiggy. I'm going to make a half wreath with the holly and I've got four bunches here that I'm going to use. I don't need a very long stem for this. So I've cut this down so it's just maybe two centimeters long and I'm gonna insert this at the front. Of course, use a straw if you want in a real cake, but this is a styrofoam cake so it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna have this one kind of coming off of the front a little bit. So it's draping down a little bit from the top edge. Next, I have a couple bunches. One of the three leaves, which I will insert behind this. And I kind of want these ones facing forward because we're not gonna be really looking at any other parts of the cake. And I like when they're kind of more forward facing. Next bunch. I wanna use this one as an extension of this larger bunch. So I will just nestle it in there. play around with the leaves until you're happy with the way they look. And then the final bunch, let's put it right behind there. So we just got a nice little half wreath here with our branches making the rest of the stem. And then I think I might even add a couple extra little berries that we have just scattered about. It might be a bit tricky because this fondant is very hard, but I have my little scribe tool so I can try to make a little insertion point. And then trim this berry quite close and then I should be able to insert that in. And I am doing some of these to cover up the spots where I pinned the wreath down. So it looks a bit cleaner from the front. Thank you for watching this holly wreath cake today. Don't forget to grab all the tools and equipment that you'll need to make the video in the description box below. Subscribe as well before you head out and I'll see you in the next video.